I'm going to stop that piece. I'm going to talk a little bit more about stories. I just have a few, you know, the last 10 minutes, we will add some more pieces about stories. And, um, and then we'll have uh, uh, sort of the conclusion. I'm going to talk about complexification on Thursday. All right, so this was about the power of stories, you know, the effects that it has on people. This is, you know, I just, we, we started on this. Um, you know, very strong one, sorry. How literature shapes civilization. And I mentioned this one, for example. So this is this, is this French journalist talking about, uh, um, you know, the stories they tell in France are not working. They're not powerful enough. Um, and it's not just, of course, about story. You have to have reality, right? You have to have that if someone comes to the U.S. looking for a better life, they can actually find it, right? If that's the, the, the story of the U.S. has always been like that or has long been like that for many people. Um, it has to be both true and possible, right? So it's not just about this. Uh, getting into the effects that uh, these stories have, of course, we have the terrible thing that happened in Pittsburgh, um, <clears throat> I guess a month ago. It's hard to remember off the top of my head, but uh, which was inspired basically just by stories, right? It was stories about the, I think at the time, the caravan, which supposedly had terrorists in it, which is completely evaporated as a, as a story, right? The caravan coming through Mexico. Um, <clears throat> But the, that, you know, that event was, um, as, far as, as far as you can see, is all just about someone acting on a story. This one, you know, this guy's famous for um, getting, getting the internet and driving up to DC to find out about this Comet Ping Pong place. So this is Pizzagate. Uh, the intel wasn't 100%, he said. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's, it's incredibly bad. Uh, Right, but this guy comes to this pizza place believing or wondering if there's a basement with children in a child trafficking, you know, disgusting, disgusting thing involving Hillary Clinton somehow and, and George Soros. Brings a gun, shoots it. Um, no, one, no one gets hurt in this, this case. But, um, you know, this is purely stories, right? This is purely story. He wanted to check it out. Alex Jones is involved in this, right? Right, so, you know, <clears throat> yeah. One said that Mrs. Clinton has personally murdered and chopped up children. Yeah, I don't know. Right, it's just insane. Um, but the point is, this is just a recent example. It's small. It didn't end up with a, a terrible thing. Um, and of course, uh, it, it will seem very small in the history of everything, but it's a very clear example of just a pure story making someone do something potentially very bad. So Gary King, who's um, uh, heads up a runs, he's, he's a very powerful uh, social science group at Harvard um, Institute for Quantitative Study of Social Science, I think it's IQSS. So this is about uh, looking at um, Weibo, I think it was, must have been Weibo, there's only Weibo. And um, the, the, the work here was to show that, uh, or what they uncovered was that the Chinese government there seems to act in a way that is more about distraction rather than arguing with people, for example, right? So, you know, you've got, there's a lot of, you can have your posts just simply removed, right? They'll just disappear. You know, you write a certain thing, it's like, gone. So there's that. But then there's also just this kind of obfuscation and, and moving people away from particular arguments. Uh, you can also make the truth a needle in, in a haystack. This is from, uh, this is a, on the media piece from uh, maybe two years ago. To, before the election, I would say. But it's about accidentally or, you know, uh, or purposefully just putting out all of these stories, all of these possibilities, and it's hard to, hard to sort it out, right? So you can't figure out what the truth is, even, you know, even if you're really trying diligently doing your research. This is from this piece. Uh, this is a, the, a Russian play from the 90s, uh, just putting out stories, supporting all sorts of different groups, right? Not just one group that's against this one, but supporting all of them, uh, because you just want to foment uh, disarray and so on. Uh, so this is a good thing to look at. So it can be done on purpose, where you're just crazy and you just say crazy things all the time, or it can be done very, very um, purposefully, disinformation. Oh, okay, so this is a strong statement, I guess, but uh, surveillance state, right? So this is pretty good, right? If you have the story that God is omniscient and watching and is aware of everything, and you really believe that, then um, that's a pretty good 
you know, this is way before 1984. This is, this is a pretty good system. And uh, you know, it could be quite, quite effective in, in getting people to behave in, you know, in hopefully good ways. Um, but it's an infrastructure that's maintained in the social wild, right, by storytellers and story believers. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm not going to get shot by lightning. Um, I'm not sure. But, you know, there are, you know, I, it is true, right, that we live in a world where there are very, very large competing religions that don't believe we don't match up with each other. So in, in some important details. So someone is wrong, um, which is interesting. Uh, so yeah, so it's the end of privacy, right? We're worried about privacy now, but um, someone who watches every thought, that is pretty bad, yeah. It's not just, uh, you know, the cameras in the corner, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, the, and it is kind of remarkable what's happened now with, potentially with cameras, right? I mean, in terms of finding people and catching people. And, yeah. Uh, okay. This is an important part, I think, of, and this is the Ten Commandments. Uh, if you've got a really powerful story, you know, which is more than just, you know, it's a story now, it's a culture or whatever it is, or it's a whole, um, um, you know, with conspiracy theories, you know, you want a totalizing uh, way of, of thinking, um, you know, like Q, QAnon. I don't know if you saw this, uh, Mike Pence was meeting some... Uh, I guess soldiers recently, and one of them had a QAnon patch on on the front. And it was all over the, you know, the pictures taken. This guy's got a big Q, which is, if you don't know about it, you need to look up. It's a, well, or maybe you don't. It is, don't, okay, don't. Um, it is a, um, yeah, it is absolutely totalizing. Everything is connected. And they have some pretty interesting things, like uh, Mueller is really working with Trump and all sorts of stuff, and Hillary Clinton's actually arrested and has an ankle bracelet, like there's all sorts of stuff. It's amazing, yeah. It all makes sense, though. Um, uh, um, so there's this. That is a very important part of the Ten Commandments, right? So the first four here are no other stories, right? Right. So this is no other, right? So we're really kind of doubling down on this. And then there's some stuff about murdering over here. But this, we're going to build out uh, these pieces. And then, you know, this is a sort of uh, uh, in-between kind of thing. Like, that's just, that's, that's a good part of the system as well, and then there's going to be some personal things that you should um, adhere to. But this is, let's make sure the story stays on our, you stay on our team. So there are other places that have done that. So operating systems, for example, so Windows. <laughs> um, I used to very much enjoy if you put Linux and Windows together, I don't know if it's still true. Windows would be oblivious to everything else or try to destroy it and so on. It would just boot up, would find itself and boot up and take over. Um, and Linux, if you boot up in Linux, it'd be like, oh, I found 10 other operating systems. Which one do you want to start? <laughs> you know, I have Amiga. Um, you know, but Windows is always like, no, <laughs> just destroy. <laughs> so it's like a dentist is operating on the, on the, on the building. <sighs> okay, so um, <clears throat> propaganda, right? So this one is, uh, oh, this is from uh, Tucker Carlson. This is just a quote. I mean, so much has happened, right? It's insane. But if you're looking to understand what's actually happening in this country, always assume the opposite of whatever they're telling you on the big news stations, except Fox. But I mean, this is just a straight up, everyone else is wrong, I'm right, you know, yeah. Look at me. <laughs> uh, but the, you know, you need this in your, in your, in your propaganda. You gotta have this somewhere in your cult or whatever. It's like, you know, everyone else is wrong. I'm a, you know, I'm the, our, our approach is the right way. And then you just keep adding all these reasons for why it is. Anyway, no lightning bolts yet. Um, but uh, but these, it's interesting to see across very different places, like where, where it's done. Okay, this is again to say we care deeply about books and the power they have. This is a terrible thing, right? And, um, you know, there's the reality of things, is Fahrenheit 451. Um, right, we will, we will not just say, you know, stay on our side, but we will destroy the other side's books, right? Um, I think I had that as the start of the course, right? Plato wanted to burn all of uh, Democritus' books. <laughs> just burn them all. <laughs> the idiot who talks about atoms, just burn everything he wrote down. Um, okay. Although I think Plato just wanted to burn books in general. Isn't that true? Like you like the oral tradition. If you're writing stuff down, then it was like you're weak-minded. You would not remember stuff. This technology, the, the kids today. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> Here's an Instagram. <laughs> ah, 
Um, so I'll leave you with this one, I guess. Uh, rags, rags to lose the stories of telling you where you can go, rags to riches. Um, it's an individual one, of course, in the US. Uh, yeah, so and I've, uh, we've talked about this fame, right? So, um, right, so you have to have these stories for societies, you know, they have to remain possible. And it can take a few generations for people to see that's not true. Um, you can maintain the belief, maybe, right? Maybe you can. Maybe you can. Maybe you can for a long time. But uh, uh, you, you, it's, it's not great to have both of those things not working. This is an easy one to pretend is still working, right? Because if someone comes out of some bad background, there's one person, you just tell that story. Tell that story. And we don't understand statistics or probability. Um, you know, I remember actually in Australia, a person saying to me, because where I came from, like, it's like, oh, the system works, actually. It was an interesting statement. I remember being kind of shocked by that um, because um, the chances are low from certain places. They're just low, right? You have no idea of the path. Uh, yeah, so this is a, actually, this, this paper is an interesting one. This is to understand if uh, stories in popular culture about rags to riches actually affect the way people think. These are hard things to get at. It's an economist's work. Um, but I think, uh, I think we'll, we'll have to sort of come back on how we're doing. Yeah, so this, I, I realize these slides are kind of like they move around through a lot of different things. Um, just the way it is. So I'll talk a little bit more about this on Thursday, and then I want to finish with some thoughts about complexification.